video sites like YouTube are taking over from web pages as the preferred way to display your latest projects. And for things like receivers, there's an advantage in demonstrating them rather than writing about them. Like a language, there are rules of video. I'll give some tips on what's worked for me. First rule, one topic per video. There are some YouTube channels that present magazine style programs that might be several guys talking about various projects, leapfrogging from topic to topic. I'm not a fan of that because you often have to skip things you're not interested in to find the things that you are. It's not like radio. You can have a radio in the background and still be doing other stuff. Whereas videos require the full viewer attention. So for that reason, I prefer to stick to one topic per video. One topic per video lets you retain focus and makes it easier for other people to find it. That's because you can specialise in your keywords and get higher in your search ranking. A larger number of shorter videos is also better for advertising revenue if you're into that. Tip number two, viewer's time is valuable. Respect it. Picture your viewer as someone with their finger on the remote control about to change the channel with the least possible excuse. Some pet hates. Long introductions. A 30 second introduction might be fine for a 30 minute TV doco, but it's not good enough for a 1 or 2 or 5 minute video. People's attention spans are short, especially if they're on the go watching on mobile devices. So keep your introduction to say 5 or 10 seconds, definitely no more. Time setting up, that's another pain. Viewers don't want to see you messing around with cables and all that sort of stuff. You know what you're going to make a video of, so get it ready before you start filming. Radio hash with marginal signals. People don't like that either. Keep it to a few seconds only. Editing is a wonderful tool. Long-winded radio contacts. You don't want that either. I prefer five shorter contacts to one long contact. Also, I tend to edit out my own transmissions, as they don't add much to the content. Even editing out 5 seconds can make the video faster moving and in my view more watchable. Think about the content. Unless you're a talented raconteur, you do need to think a little bit about what you're going to say before you say it on video. Some people can speak off the cuff without much in the way of scripts and things. Unfortunately, I'm not one of them. Parts of my videos are recorded 10 times or more. Parts of my videos, parts of my videos are recorded 10 times or more. Parts of my videos are recorded 10 times or more. I take the least worst and ditch the rest. If you can fake an actual delivery, you've got it made. Otherwise, for the rest of us, good editing can cover a multitude of sins. Think about the picture. Computer screens used to be like TVs. Their screens are always getting bigger to higher and higher definition. Things have changed a bit with mobile devices. A lot of people will be watching you on tiny little screens. So, HD may not be as critical as it was a few years ago. And it also means big file sizes, which can be a hassle if using video editors on limited speed computers. Workbenches, bookshelves and equipment can look authentic, but unfortunately they may distract from the thing that you're showing, especially if it's zoomed out wide. For a similar reason, don't wear clothes with big logos, unless they're part of the video. Change the view. Some videos have the same scene all the time, and to me, that's repetitive. Maybe mix things around a bit, alternating between a talking head and an equipment demonstration. Light can be a problem. Lights at home may be too dim for good video. It may help to remove the lampshade. You could even try using a spotlight to focus on the object of interest, if it's small, like a circuit board or a component. Lamps with goosenecks may also be useful. Natural light, such as produced on a bright cloudy day, like today, is probably about the best. A problem with bright sunlight is you squinting when you're looking into the sun, and that doesn't look very relaxed. And the shade may be too dark. 
I'm a bit slack in that area and that's something I know I could do better with my videos. Another bad habit is hand holding the camera. The shake can make viewers seasick. I tend to travel light and not take a tripod. There's often a ledge or fence handy that can support your camera. Or you can get mini tripods that are only about that long. That does mean that your camera is often near the ground and you're looking up with the camera, but in practice I haven't found that a severe problem. As for the zoom setting, there's nothing worse than delivering the perfect explanation but with half your head missing. So I tend to err on zooming out rather than zooming in. Think about the sound. Music on videos is often overdone and I think it detracts from the content. If you're demonstrating a receiver or DX contacts, then I'd rather hear the sound of the DX station and not some background music. Use music sparingly, unless it sets the mood for a scene or you're demonstrating the fidelity of one of your projects. And talking about receivers, there's so many demonstrations on YouTube where the audio is either muffled or very thin. The audio is the first impression you get of any receiver demo, so make sure the audio is okay before you start producing the video. I'm often outside and wind noise can be a problem. The more professional people use a lapel mic, but I tend to find that's too much extra stuff to carry, so I don't bother. Today is actually quite a windy day and I've overcome it by setting up between two bathing boxes. Alternatively, try and reduce your video's dependence on sound. For instance, by using written captions on the screen instead of talking. The first thing I should mention is sometimes you can break the rules and still get lots of viewers. A video of someone extending an antenna pole is hardly riveting, yet many seem to like it. You viewers out there seem to like the unpredictable. You like funny questions from public. And you really love interfering animals. And a trip or a fall would have to be worth at least 20% more viewers. A friend of a friend is into trains and sometimes uploads videos. His most popular was a simple video where grazing sheep narrowly escape from being hit by a train. It went viral, getting over 300,000 views. You can hit the viewer jackpot, but it's a lottery. A surer way is to produce a consistent output of reasonable quality videos. Our last point is a good title and description. It should probably be part of your thinking right at the beginning. But I've made it last because you can actually alter this after you've uploaded the video. Title, keywords and description. They all help other people find your video. First of all, a meaningful title. A vague title, like receiver, transmitter or QRP, isn't helpful when there are thousands of other videos on all those topics. You've got five, six or seven words in that space, so use it and be specific. Keywords are also good. Leave that blank, well, you're excluding yourself to a lot of people finding your video. You can put in things like QRP, radio, SSB, receiver, whatever. Then there's the written description. If you don't know where it is, it's right down there under this window. You should put a few sentences at least, summarising what the video is about. Also, where you can find additional information, hyperlinks, etc. If you've already got videos online, I suggest going over them and having a look at the titles and the written descriptions. You may be able to add further information that helps more people find it. So, that's it. Think about the content, one topic per video, and viewer's time is valuable. If you've got more tips, please leave them below. And I look forward to seeing your video soon. For the meantime though, I'm off to do the contest.